In this problem, we're told to calculate the net torque about the axle of the wheel shown in this figure. Assume that a friction torque of 0.4 newton meters opposes the motion. So this right here is going to be our figure. And so let's go ahead and write down what we're given first before we solve this. So there's really only one thing we're given besides this figure, which is that there's going to be a friction torque of 0.4 uh, newton meters that's going to oppose the motion. So uh, we can just say uh, torque, and then we're going to call it T sub F because it's friction. Right, it's going to be equal to 0.4 uh, newton meters. So 0.4 newton meters. This is going to be the torque or the friction torque. And so yeah, that's what we're given. And so how are we going to solve this problem? So we're trying to find the net torque. So we can say net torque. Right. So what is the net torque going to be equal to? Essentially, what the net torque is going to be equal to, it's going to be all of our uh, uh, types of torque added up. So we're going to get torque from this applied, right, you can call it the torque of the applied forces, right, so that's going to be all the torque from all of these forces, and then it's also going to be this other force, right, so the torque from the friction, so essentially the net torque is going to be equal to uh, the torque from the applied forces, which is all these forces added up, plus the torque from friction, right, so they tell us what this is, but we need to find what the applied torque is, so that's what the main part of this problem is, so Let's go ahead and find that. So the applied torque is essentially going to be uh, all of these, uh, the torque from all of these forces added up. So how do we solve for this? So in order to do that, you need to know the formula for torque, which is the radius times the force times the sine of theta. So this right here is your formula for solving for torque. And so essentially, the applied torque is all of these added up. right? So what I'm going to do is just label these one two and three so we can just solve for the torque of these individually and then essentially the applied torque is just going to be them added up so it's just going to be one plus two plus three so all these added up so let's just go ahead and start by finding each of these so let's start with one so solving for this torque right uh there's a few things you have to know so essentially the way that the force is being applied, it's going to either cause it to go counterclockwise or clockwise. And so that's going to depend, or because of that, we're going to label it either negative or positive. So let's start with this one, right? So this is one. So it's going to be, the force is going to be 18 newtons. It's going to have a radius from the center of 24 centimeters, right? You can see that. So let's write that. So the radius is 24 centimeters. But when we do this, we want to make sure it's in meters. So 24 centimeters is 0.24 meters. So 0.24 multiplied by uh, the force, which is 18, multiplied by the sine of theta. And so what theta is, it's going to be the angle between the radius and the force. So notice how the force is being applied this way, and the radius is this way. So the angle between them is 90, and this just forms a 90 degree angle. So it's the sine of 90. And what you should know is the sine of 90 is just 1, so it's really just this part. But what you also got to do is keep it in the sign. So what we do is we say if it goes counterclockwise, uh, it's going to be the counterclockwise direction is positive, and the or the counterclockwise direction is po uh, positive, and the clockwise direction is negative. So if you look at where this force is being applied, if we push it this way, right, there's a force this way, it's going to cause it to spin this way, right? And notice that this is clockwise. So that means this direction is negative, so this torque is going to be negative. So we keep the minus sign out front. So essentially, it's going to be equal to minus 0.24 times 18 times the sine of 90, but this is just 1. So 0.24 multiply that by 18. If you go ahead and do that, you're going to get 4.32, right? But it's minus. So minus 4.32. And then it's going to be, uh, this right here is the radius, which is in meters. And then this is in Newton. So Newton meters. So Newton meters. Uh, this is going to be one. So let's move on to two now. So two. Uh, let's start off with the direction. So two. Notice it's going to push up this way, so it's going to cause it to go this way, if you think about it. So it's going counterclockwise, meaning it's positive, so we don't need to put the minus sign. And then it's just going to be uh, the radius. And so the radius in this case is just going to be uh, 0.24 again, right? The distance from the center. So 0.24 multiplied by the force, which is 28, times the sine of the angle. And if you look at this, it's going to form another 90 degree angle between the radius and the force. So sine of 90 again. So this just is 1. So it's just 0 0.24 times 28. So do that 0 0.24 times 28 
times 28, you're going to get 6.72. So 6.72 Newton meters again. And then now let's do three. So three, uh, it's going to be the same thing, right? So look at the direction. So the direction, it's going to go uh, this way, right? So we're pushing this way. It's going to cause it to spin this way. So it's going clockwise. Therefore, it's negative. So minus, uh, minus, and then it's going to be the distance, right? So the radius, right? We have to put the radius. And so the radius, if you look here from where it is, it's going to be 12 centimeters, which is just 0.12 meters. So that's the radius uh, times the force, which is just 35 newtons, right? We're just plugging this in formula or this formula. And then the sine, and then if you look again, this is where the radius is. This is where uh, the force is being applied. So it's a 90 degree angle. So the sine of 90 again, just one. So essentially the torque here is just going to be minus 0.12 times 35. So plug that in your calculator. You're going to get minus 4.2. So Newton meters again. So that's going to be that. So now what we can do is solve since we have all these. So the applied torque is just going to be all these added up. So this is going to be equal to uh, 1, which is minus 4.32, plus 2, which is 6.72, and then plus minus 4.2. So go ahead and do this, minus 4.32 plus 6.72 minus 4.2. So if you go ahead and do that, you're going to get minus 1.8 Newton meters. So yeah. Minus 1.8 Newton meters, that's going to be the applied uh, torque. But what we need to do now is we're trying to find the net, right? And so we have to take into account this friction torque. So uh, keep in mind what this negative sign means too. So it's minus 1.8 uh, Newton meters, but since the negative means it's going clockwise, right? Because counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is negative. So it's going in the negative direction. Just keep that in mind. But now what we can do is just add them up. So the net torque is going to be the applied torque, which is minus 1.8. And then this is uh, 0.4, so plus 0.4. If you go ahead and do this, minus 1 point, or you add these up, minus 1.4 uh, Newton meters, right? So essentially what it's going to be is the net torque. So you can either just keep it negative or just say, uh, this is going to be equal to the final answer, 1.4 Newton meters, and then specify the direction. So since it's negative, uh, what that means is it's going cl uh, clockwise, right? So 1.4 Newton meters clockwise, you can write it that way. Whatever your teacher wants you to do, if they want you to just write it with the minus sign or just explain it. So 1.4 Newton meters clockwise, that's gonna be uh, the net torque. So yeah, this right here is gonna be your answer and hopefully you found this useful.